right. Uh, this is November 7 Echo Charlie Victor with N7 UVH. And, uh, boy, I got to say, at this point in time, Pat, you are um, uh, more than just a, an Elmer. You're a digital Elmer, Elmer there I've seen on YouTube with the Spokane DX Association. And, uh, boy, you're mentoring uh, local hams still to this day. So a pleasure to meet you and chat with you and finally get you here for talking shack and five questions. I, I thank you for stopping by. Over. Yeah, right on, Sean. N7 ECV, 7 UVH, and Post Falls, Idaho. Yeah, it's fun. I remember when uh, my Elmer helped me out and how grateful I was for him to, like, loan me equipment or tell me what to do, not to do. So, um, yeah, that sort of thing is, is a hoot. You know, I got to say before we get started that I, 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 I was given a class got my license and then uh, nothing else the only reason why I didn't get on the air between 93 and 07 is like that that the art of the Elmer was doing something very strange and I, I missed the boat um, so it's it's a pleasure to see each facet of it it's not just a YouTube guy or it's not just some old guy in a garage you know but um, what fascinates me the most is the stories uh, so we'll start here with with just a few questions it just takes a little bit of time okay Oh, I'm in no hurry. All right. Well, I appreciate it there, Pat. First one to start with is uh, what got you interested in radio? <laughs> Boy, that would be my uncles. Um, my mom had seven brothers. Most all of them were hams at one time or another, and they were all from Sandpoint locally here. And uh, so they all had ham radios and stuff, and being a little boy and whatnot, I'd play with the radio and listen, you know, and chain, dialing in and uh, listening to conversations. And one of the, the uncles actually had an illegal broadcast station, AM broadcast station, just outside the AM broadcast band. And uh, this, he was in high school, and I think he was putting out 10 watts or something like that. And he would spin records, the records that he had. And uh, the kids would call in, you know, on the, the telephone and whatnot. And, and uh, so he started out DJing that. So that kind of got me going a little bit. If the, station, the radio station was still up in the attic up there. You had to go up some creaky stairs and whatnot and uh, no heat, but uh, it was still up there set up. And uh, so I got playing around with his radio. He had an old Kenwood TS520, and uh, he would put that mobile in his uh, 63 Impala and bring it up to North Idaho when he visited. So I'd sit out in his car and sometimes run the battery dead, listening to spinning the dial. And he told me, he says, you get your ham license, you can have that radio. So that was my incentive. Oh, satisfactory. Wow, what a fun story, man. I can't imagine the TS520 mobile, but, I, you know, it's it, radio's as big as this Ameritron. We're sitting on the on the hump there. <laughs> uh, and, you, hey, thank you for sharing about the, uh, the DJ stuff there. It's interesting. You know, when I got my call at, or started class, I'd, I had just gotten back from an amateur disc jockey night on 105.7 KOZZ in Reno there. And Monday, there's this flyer that says uh, amateur radio license class, and I thought for sure I was it was synchronicity. The world world was talking to me. <laughs> so how neat uh, for that to be kind of tied into uh, how you got started. That's very cool. Uh, so how long have you been a ham, there, Pat? Uh, let's see. I got my license. Well, I got my novice license at 18. So. Um, and then I let it lapse. I think that was four years. And when I got my 20s, it got married really young and had kids really young. And then I got back into it when I, uh, in 1990. So this current license is roughly 35 years. Oh, satisfactory. It's a long time to be holding on to a hobby and stuff there. Well, that being said, so, uh, um, it's kind of a two-part question. A, what's your favorite mode? And then uh, uh, do you have a favorite brand? Are you an Icom, a Yesu guy? Uh, is there something, uh, if you were given a microphone to pitch for either one, your mode or your favorite brand there, uh, what would those be? Over. Ah, good question. 
I think my favorite mode is I, I like the contest, and I think I got into RTTY contesting, and um, one of the guys had an old teletype machine, and he was just converting from paper to a Commodore 64 computer and interfacing it with a radio, and that really got my juices going, how you can hook a computer to a radio, if you could call it Commodore 65, it was a computer. And so that got me going. And uh, so RTTY, I've been contesting it for many years. And then as far as brand, I would say, hey, Kenwood, because that 520 was my first radio. And I've stuck with Kenwood all along. In fact, I had the 440 that the gentleman had that we were just talking to a little bit ago, and um, the only reason why I stuck with that is because my stuff was hooked to a computer. So my cabling was the same. It went the same for my first solid state radio. I, um, I think it was the 530. So the cables all stayed the same. So if I got a new 440, I'd just plug it in. And I went to the 520 or the the 450s, the 470s on up. All the cabling stayed the same. So being a, a, a contester, digital guy, that was the main reason. Nowadays, the technology of radios and stuff, I, I think they're all great. I don't think there is a bad radio. For me, I stuck with Kenwood just because of cabling. Boy, and, and you know, sometimes that's all it takes, too, and it's doing good. And you are one heck of a contester, sir. You're being rather modest there. Can you tell us about some of your accomplishments, at least on, on, on your RTTY there? Yeah, I like the Roundup. Uh, that's the big one, the AWRL Roundup that's in January. And I usually do pretty good top scoring in that. I, I can... Uh, taken first place in Idaho several times, first place in 7th District, maybe 5th place in the United States, 15th in the world. So that, that's that been um, probably uh, some of the other, the, the, seven, uh, the 7 QP, 7th Area QSO party, 7 QP, I got quite a few first places in it. In fact, I'm looking at the plaques on the wall from it. But, um, yeah. Uh, done that and so after you do it a couple times and whatnot it, I haven't really tried that hard to spend that much time in the seat now that being said I'm a member of a DX group locally here and now they have sanctioned uh, contests like uh, this last weekend was the CQ sideband contest well that is one contest that the club works as club members and we have trophies and plaques within our club for that so kind of makes you stay in the seat a little bit longer seven uvh oh no doubt n7 echo charlie victor he's no doubt that's if worth paying the the dues and everything right there for the club to just kind of uh, reciprocate the 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 favors back that's and it gives everybody a reason to play around you know uh, it's funny uh, once you work everybody down the band, then all you got to do is sit and wait for the next one. So I guess it could get a little bit lonely. Hey, so I've got two more questions for you. Have you got time? Oh, yeah. Okay, so this one, uh, fairly simple. Any advice you'd give the new hams today? If there was a group of new hams sitting in front of you, they just got their ticket, say their general ticket or tech even, uh, any advice that you would offer new hams right now in front of you today? Over. Ah. Uh. Very good question. What's the first thing that comes to my mind is, um, the first thing that comes to my mind is noise, uh, shack noise, um, wall warts, uh, computers, uh, your variable speed washing machine, and uh, how to learn to track those down and um, try to, if you can't, if you can't hear people, you can't work them. I mean, you could put an amplifier on and all that sort of stuff and become an alligator station. You're all mouth and no ears. It ain't going to do any good. So I would say emphasize uh, you receive no matter where you're at. We have HOAs now. We have cities and noisy stuff. So I think that would be something is learn how to do it. And... Um, 
the other thing that uh, come to mind is get into digital radio uh, with the uh, uh, FT8 modes now. Uh, you don't have to have a big antenna. You 50 watts, and you can get your DXCC. So that would be the direction. If they were talking to me, that would be the direction I push them. Oh, uh, very great answer. I do appreciate you taking the time for that. You know, I've I've never worked more than 10 watts FT8 until last night. I, I, I whatever power output is the max. Well, what, about 300 watts, I guess, uh, with this amplifier. Just one time with the ALC rolled way back. And, uh, boy, that splat on PSK31 was sure impressive. But I just I had to get out of there because I didn't want to be answering anybody's call. All my FT8's been 10 watts or under, and I'm trying to keep it that way. I've got one more question for you there, Pat. So th along the lines of the last one, um, if you could just finish this sentence and answer it for me. The future of ham radio is question mark. Go ahead. I would say needs more young blood. Um, I think with the digital stuff and hooking radios to computers, I mean, there's stuff that I'm not even into where they use mesh um, and uh, Wi-Fi and interconnecting. Um, I think uh, with I think the ham radio is bright because of that technology, and it's not tubes and CW keys anymore. Oh, very good advice. Very good advice. Well. I thank you for taking a moment to chat with me, and I, I look forward to getting this edited and put up. Uh, you're a very valuable asset to the amateur radio community, and I hardly know you. <laughs> oh, we'll be doing more of that. That was a lot of fun. I appreciate it. And as a group, we need to at least go raise hell at a, a IOP or something one day. Thank you again, Pat. You have a good afternoon. See you, Sean. Have a good one. And go buy a lottery ticket. Seven UVH. Yeah, you play the same numbers. Just pick something and play them for a dollar a piece. There. Now, good luck and have fun and uh, enjoy the view. It's the it's time for them cute sweaters to come out. N7 ECV. I got a QSY. Bye bye.